been uh, called by all my, my followers, all the people on Instagram to be uh, Clay Court and uh, Philippe Chatrier, you know, the, the main court on uh, the French Open. So welcome, probably the first time you, you see it here on, on YouTube doing videos for you guys. So today what I want to cover and, you know, talking a little more about strategies and things uh, that would really help you, you know, uh, this is more maybe aiming to, to send information to the recreational players, the club players, you know, you playing leagues. Um, for you to understand, and I'm, I'm going to focus here on one thing uh, from a study that the ATP made where it was talking about how the top 10 players, okay, the top 10 players in the ranking, uh, play against the rest in terms of the, di the distance, okay, the, the distance, the average distance they have when they hit winners, okay, again comparing the top 10 with the rest of the players. This study was showing that the top 10 players have an average of 97 centimeters, 75 and 1 uh, point 96, so this is centimeters, actually 1 meter and 96 centimeters, this is centimeters, and then the rest of the players have here, sorry, this is uh, 202, okay, this is 202, and here, yes, it's 196, 75, and 75. So this shows us something right away, okay, right away. We can see that in the forehand side, if this is the rest, okay, if this would be the top 10, playing into the court, we can see that in the forehand side and maybe here in the depth okay, of the ball, we have almost the same, maybe 6 centimeters of difference, but where do we have the difference is in the backhand space, okay, most of the times backhand because most of the players on the tour are uh, righties, so this would be the backhand side, and we can see one thing here which is going to lead us to, you know, to, to the message that I want to send with this video is why do the top 10 players have a bigger space? This is actually 20 centimeters, guys. This is a lot when we're talking in accuracy, 20 centimeters, something, you know, like this. Okay, it's a lot. It seems like, oh, come on, 20 centimeters here, like this, like this. Guys, this, think about how fast the balls of the pro players goes. Okay, about you know, in, in miles, 100 miles per hour, average, we have 120, we, you know, 90, but average, we could say that 1, 1, 110. And one of the key things here is for you to understand, you know, this again, going more to the club players, maybe this a professional player or somebody that is playing almost professional knows a little more about this, but I actually made this video, you know, uh, in Portuguese for, for all the, the followers, you know, on my Instagram, and it was a huge success. Because they, they understood the importance of needing a strategy to play. And why I say this and I bring this as a strategy to play. Why do you think that the top 10 players have a, a more quiet, okay, a more uh, reliable winner when they hit it and they have more space? It's because the rest of the players don't run to the ball? Of course not. It's because um, they they throw winners from maybe down here? Of course not, because from down here, even if it goes too fast, it would be tough to make a winner, you know, with a player defending here, having such a big space. This is almost a meter, okay, here. So, why do you think? And the reason, it's because the top 10 players, the top 10 players work better the points than the rest. And here is where I wanna be the big message, okay, I'm gonna put it here in big, work the points, okay, work the points, they have a strategy set up, I'm not saying that these players, okay, the rest, because, you know, top 10, you can talk about the 11, the 12, and it's almost the same, maybe the big three are a little bit different, but working the point, and what I mean, and, and the message that I want to give you guys here, it's you, the player playing tournaments, playing uh, USDA league, playing leagues in your country, playing you know, uh, the state's championship or, you know, national championship, whatever you're playing, you have to understand that playing with a strategy and working the points, it's going to give you what the top 10 players find to be a safer place, okay, because we want to go in a safer place, 
to play a winner, okay, to hit a winner. So what happened here? Let me give you just a quick example. Here we have, uh, let's say, Feather, okay? He will uh, build the point, okay? He will build the point, moving you around, moving you around. And the ball, we have to understand that every ball that most of those, those players play, of course, some of them too, but maybe we have seen, again, tennis is all numbers, it's all uh, percentages, okay? So we have to understand that they will uh, punish you and they will create damage with the ball before hitting a winner. With the ball before hitting a winner. So maybe Federer has you all the way up here, okay, moving you, he takes you out of the court. Then he, he is inside of the court and you say, well, now he has a very a great space, you know, to hit a winner. But what Federer maybe will do, he will take you down the line, make you run, okay? Sometimes he will hit a winner, I'm saying better, I mean, could be any of them. Instead of just rushing a winner from over there, where maybe the rest of the player, and even if we go up, you know, 90 in the war, 100, 150, they will try to take the risk, the risk from here, and they will play the ball, okay, just trying to go close to a line to make you, uh, to make it a ball not reachable, Okay, but then when we talk about players, you know, with a, with a tougher strategy, with a more consistent uh, strategy and tactic and way of playing, we find that, you know, they will work the point, they will work you out and maybe find a ball that will allow them to come to the net to finish the point because they feel it's safer and not just throwing winners from here. I mean, do we see it? Of course, of course we see it a lot. Again, this is just a study that the ATP made where it shows, where it's showing us numbers, it's showing us numbers, and here we have clearly a huge difference of 20 centimeters of where the top 10 can play, not, not can play, but where they have the average in the last 10 years of the most uh, winners hit, okay, with a 20 centimeters difference between the forehand side and of course between the rest of the players. So this is telling me, and this is sending me a message, okay, as a coach and as a player first, you need to have a strategy, a solid tactic, a solid strategy that you will be able to work, okay, to work the points and to make a, a smart decision making so you can have a safer ball the moment you're gonna hit a winner. Second, it's telling me, again, that I have to work the points, okay, work the points and not rush over them. Okay, I see a lot, uh, I've seen it a lot, and I still see it a lot when I see, um, you know, uh, adults player, when I see, um, you know, the, the adults leagues, even if it's a, guys, even if it's a 5.5, you know, uh, I still see a lot of rushing in the balls. I still see a lot of, of, of taking a huge risks on the points. I'm not saying that you don't have to take, but you can always, you can always be aggressive and find you know, spots playing here and just trying to avoid the playing too close to the lines. But why this is also so important? You have to think that when you're training, you don't have the same pressure that you have in a match. So if you in a match, okay, you are not the, the most accurate hitter and you go to hit so aggressive to the lines in a match, if you miss one, you miss two, you miss three balls, what is going to happen is that your confidence is going to start to go down and this is something that want, we don't want it to happen, okay? Your confidence will start to go down, your accuracy will start to fail so now you will have to go back again to say, no, I'm, I'm not safe playing to the lines I will try to, save, uh, to play safer and then you guys start to play to this um, prohibited space maybe in the middle where your opponent will be able to, to create pace and to create game and attack you, okay? So what we have to understand is that it's very important to follow, you know, what the top 10 do in working the points, working the points, in having a solid strategy, in having a strategy that will allow you to stay on the point, to drive and control the point, to be able to find a spaces, okay, bigger spaces for you to play a winner, okay, maybe you try to get a winner, then you go to an end, your opponent brings it back, and then you finish with the volley, and then maybe your winner ends up he being here because you just close it with the volley, okay? And that is great. But we, I find, you know, I'm, I'm talking about this with other great coaches, I find that there is a lot of rushing, 
from the junior, getting into the some uh, sort of level of professional, you know, the, 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 the earliest levels of professional, and then all the way uh, on the adults. And here is actually where maybe the top 10 uh, make a big difference because it's in the important matches, you know, the phrase, oh, this match, you know, he won just, just for one point. There was one ball that decided the match, and that ball is because in the important moments they are able to stay through the strategy, they are able to stay on the point, to keep working the points, knowing and trusting that they have a solid uh, foundation of their game to be able then to finish the point where they have to finish and when they have to finish. Okay, so my message with this video is showing you how the top 10 players, the ones that maybe we have to look up to, okay, of course, always taking care of not getting too much into detail because not copying everything they do because, of course, we don't have the same hours of work, we don't have the same experience, we don't have the same skills, okay? But yes, looking after them to find a way of saying, well, if they, if they are having much more space to hit the winner than the rest, if they are finding much more space, why? So here is where my, my thinking starts, okay? Oh, because they work on the point, because they have more patience, because they wait more, because they look for a ball that is going to be safer, they don't take that much risk, because they're able to work the point having safer spots, okay? Safer spots that will move the opponent around until they find, okay, the spot to go safer for a winner, all right? So this is the message that I want to give you guys to work on points, to work on a strategy, to have a, a game pattern set that is going to allow you to punish your opponents and to hit winners or to win points more, uh, you know, in a safer way for you to, in the long term, okay, remember always tennis is a process, in the long term, find more confidence games after games after games after match, and then you will feel safer, you will feel more confident to create and to play different strategies depending on your opponent you are playing, alright? I hope you guys really like this video, if you have any questions let me know in the comments below please share the video, like it, subscribe to the channel if you didn't it means a lot for me to have you guys here uh, enjoying and taking out the touch of all this content that I give you, alright? Thank you guys and see you in the next one!